Patents need a lot of litigation and a lot of legal files. And in certain cases, um, you know, the companies aren't able to get what they want. For example, recently in um, uh, Brazil, the farmers got together and sued Monsanto and said, you are taking royalties in an unjust way. You owe us $2.2 billion and the courts ruled in favor of the farmers and against Monsanto. So the new aim of the companies to control the sea and make it a source of permanent profit rather than permanent life is the terminator technology. Now the terminator technology is basically a genetically engineered seed which releases a toxin when the embryo is forming in the seed. Now, it's the embryo that is the future seed. It's that embryo which will become seed in the future, just like you were all embryos in your mother's wombs. And you became you. What that technology does is release a lethal toxin, and that language of lethal toxin is in the patent on the Terminator technology. The patent is jointly held by the United States Department of Agriculture and a company called Delta and Fineland, which is now owned by Monsanto. So the US government and the world's biggest seed company owning it jointly. And this language of lethal toxin is right in that patent application. So this lethal toxin kills the embryo, which means that seed has now become sterile. You, you have a wheat grain, but when you sow it, it won't give you a wheat plant. And this is a guaranteed way to make everyone come back to buy seed from the company that has used the terminated technology. At this point, this technology is illegal because we worked very hard at the global level to uh, ban it through the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is the International United Nations Treaty to protect biodiversity. Even though it is banned, because there is what is called intellectual property in C, where the companies can hide from governments what they are doing with our seed, <coughs> there is a possibility, and a lot of scientists believe this is happening, that they are already using the terminated technology to create male sterile lines for hybridization. Because hybrid seed, you can do it two ways. In two fertile crops by hand, you can take the pollen and hybridize. But that's very labor intensive. The other is you just make the male plant sterile. And a lot of scientists are worried that they might already be using, but because this is a system, uh, this whole idea of intellectual property in seed is a system where companies can hide from society and hide from governments what they're doing and treat it as their intellectual property, um, it becomes very, very difficult to really regulate and monitor. Which is why we've launched this campaign on seed freedom. Uh, and this is the sm smaller version, the big report is that thing. For the freedom of the seed, which includes, first and foremost, ensuring there are no intellectual property rights related to seed, because seed is not invented. And therefore, to claim an invention of that which has not been invented is wrong. Seed is a commons. We need to share, share it and save it. And the other side of seed freedom is to be able to exercise your duty and your right to freely save and exchange seed. Seed that is living, seed that is fertile, seed that is open source. Like you have in software, and the young people will know. Open source software, right? It's different from paying a, a patent royalty to Microsoft. And that's why you've got the open source software. What we are campaigning for, the movement we are building through Navdanya, is open source seed. Open source legally, that it is the commons, it cannot be patented open source biologically that it does not have terminated technology.
It is fertile and will give 